Hi, welcome to a part for you video tutorials. This video tutorial will be shown to you by Dave. He will take you through a step-by-step -step procedure in repairing this appliance. Hi there. This tutorial is about solenoid valves, how they work and some of their attributed faults. If you know how something works, then you're halfway there to locating a fault if it breaks down. So let's start with how the valve functions. The water enters the valve via a hose connection and encounters a plastic mesh filter. This is to prevent small particles of scale and grit getting into the valve, but more about that later. The next thing the water meets is a rubber washer which is used as a flow restrictor. This forms a barrier and cuts down the initial pressure of the water as it enters the valve. Once past the restrictor it seeps into the upper section of the diaphragm via one or more bleed holes. Because there is no exit for the water to leave the cavity on top of the diaphragm, it effectively prevents it from lifting and therefore stops the water from advancing beyond that point. The diaphragm is clamped between the valve body and the piston housing, which is inside an electrical coil. The piston is covering a small hole in the centre of the diaphragm and when an electric charge is passed through the coil it magnetises the piston and lifts it up. This uncovers the hole in the diaphragm and the water held captive can now run free. The pressure of the water entering the valve will now force the diaphragm up and allow it to flow through. When the power to the coil is turned off the small spring on top of the piston is strong enough to push it down onto the diaphragm again and effectively cover the central hole. Now the water entering through the bleed holes can't escape so the diaphragm closes again and this shuts off the water. In short that's how solenoid valve works. There are different designs and shapes but generally speaking they all work on the same basis and this tutorial is on how they work not on what they look like. This one is like the cutaway version you saw in the animation with the filter in place. As I said earlier it's there to catch any bits of lime scale or grit that may be in the system and it can get clogged, especially if you've just had work done on your water supply. If it's the cold valve that's affected, it calls the machine to stop during the rinse cycle. But if it's the hot valve, then it wouldn't take the powder and you'd get a very bad wash. This will give you a first hand look at the diaphragm and you'll notice the larger hole in the centre, which would be covered by the piston compared to the small ones on the outer edge. The piston is metal, but with the rubber tip on one end to cover the outlet hole in the diaphragm. As you can see, the spring is only small, but it's all that's needed to push the piston back down when the power to the coil is turned off. This next valve is a triple, and has three sets of everything the single valve has. But as you can see on this one, the end outlet pipe is vertical, whilst the other two are horizontal. Normally triple valves are associated to washer dryers, where a cold supply is needed for the drying cycle. All the valves shown in this video, plus ones for almost all makes, are available online at apartforyou.co.uk. This is a standard twin cold fill valve, which supplies water for the wash and rinses on one side and the fabric conditioner on the other. And finally the single valve. Depending on your machine, it could be used for either hot or cold. When you remove the filter, grip the tab on top of it with a pair of long nose pliers and pull it all the way out in one movement. This way it will prevent any small particles of grit falling back into the body of the valve. The flow restrictor can be removed by gripping it at the side and pulling it free. It sits on a small moulding in the centre of the valve. As I said in the animation, the flow restrictor is there to reduce the pressure of water entering the valve, but in some cases if you have very low water pressure, such as if your water tank is on the same level as your machine, then the valve may not operate properly and it could take a long time to fill. In this case, you could remove the restrictor to allow a faster water flow through the valve, but this is not advisable on your cold valve if you have mains water feed. If you've had calls to remove the filter then make sure it's clean well before replacing it because if a bit of grit gets caught between the diaphragm and the valve body it would allow a trickle of water to pass when the valve was closed. If this happened you'd find clear water in the drum in the morning. In this situation it's not advisable to dismantle the valve and try cleaning it out because they never really work satisfactorily afterwards anyway. Just replace the valve. 
Another reason why you may get no water or very little water is if the hose is kinked or twisted. That's why it's advised to connect the bent end onto the valve, because when the machine is pushed back under the work surface it could otherwise be squashed against the wall, but wouldn't show up straight away. This normally only happens on the hot hose, because it becomes supple when heated up, and a curve or bend in the hose would cause it to kink. or you could have an open circuit coil. Use a meter and test it for continuity. If found to be faulty you could always swap coils over with the fabric conditioner valve. By this valve not working the machine wouldn't stop but it would mean your washing wouldn't have any conditioner in it. This would only be a short term fix to get you out of trouble because although the original faulty valve would now be working the fabric conditioner valve would not. Before you start to swap them over first make a note of which wires go on which coil before removing them. Then using a flat bladed screwdriver lever the coils off, but be careful because they are tight fit and you could damage the piston housing if not careful. Swap the coils over and refit the wires. The coil is not a part you can buy on its own, so you have to buy the complete valve assembly. If you enter your model number in the search bar on apartforyou.co.uk, it will throw up a list of all the relevant parts for that machine. The other obvious reason for no water is if the tap had been turned off or if there's a restriction at the tap end. To check this, turn the tap off and remove the hose from the valve. Hold the end of it over a bowl or bucket and turn the tap on again. This will tell you if it's the tap or the valve. Remember when fitting these hoses to include the rubber washer and don't over tighten the nut because you could strip the thread. They only need to be just over hand tight. We hope this video has been of use to you and remember to shop online at apartforyou.co.uk for all your domestic appliance spares because this is how we're able to make these free videos. Thanks for watching and remember to shop online at apartforyou.co.uk for all your domestic appliance spares because this is how we're able to make these free videos. Thanks for watching.